Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Dana Point City Council meeting for October the 7th. We now reconvene our meeting. Uh, City Attorney Munoz or City Manager Chuck Havis, do we have anything to report out of our closed session? Not this evening. Okay. If you'll all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Council Member Schofel this evening, and then the invocation, which will be led by <coughs> Jens Christie of Capo Beach Church. Thank you. If you'd all direct your attention to our nation's flag and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we invoke your presence here this evening asking for wisdom as we discuss the matters at hand. We're grateful to our leaders and those in authority who've accepted the stewardship of the city of Dana Point, recognizing in doing so they are accountable in the long run to the people. We ask that the outcome of the coming elections reflect your will here and nationally as well. May we be guided by your hand as we choose men and women who recognize your mercy and grace and your promise in your time to meet our needs spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially. May this coming season be one of peace and progress, blessing and rewarding us for being obedient to the word of God. Teach us to live in the moment. We cannot change the past and the future is a mystery, but you are changeless, stable, and always available. May our city be a beacon of fairness, justice, and grace an example to those who live here. We ask all this in his name, amen. Please be seated. At this time, we'll start with our presentations and proclamations. We have our business of the month, which is Mathnasium. Robert Sedita, the management analyst, will present a PowerPoint presentation. Good evening, Mayor Bartlett, members of the city council. I'm pleased to announce the Business of the Month for October 2014, Mathnasium. We are joined this evening by Mathnasium's owner, Kapil Mather, his family, and their director of education. Located in Monarch Bay Plaza, Mathnasium opened to Dana Point in January 2014. Kapil opened his first Mathnasium location in 2006 and has grown his business to four locations serving Southern Orange County. Mathnasium operates similar to a gym in that students pay a monthly fee and are able to attend as many times as they want throughout the month. Some students show up once or twice a week, others visit the facility every day. This allows the students to work around their sports schedules, extracurricular activities, as well as home life in order to meet their, meet their tutoring needs. All of Mathnasium's employees are excel in math and hold degrees in either math and or science. The employees also attend a Mathnasium University where it teaches people who are great at math to be great teachers at, of math. It helps bring the students together and also makes it a one-on-one -on -one learning experience. Mathnasium teaches all levels of math and tutors students from <coughs> second grade all the way through college. The students are provided with an initial assessment looking at their strengths and weaknesses and a program is developed to meet and satisfy their needs and also strengthen their skills. This skills development partnered with Mathnasium's exercises allows students in the program to usually jump up at least two grade levels or um, grades, letter grades, in three to four months, upwards of six months after starting the program. On behalf of, Math on behalf of the City Council, I'd like to congratulate Mathnasium on being selected Business of the Month. We wish you many years of continued success and prosperity. Kapil, if we could have um, you and your family come front and center and your staff. Well, I am really excited about uh, Kapil's business. This is just a wonderful addition to Dana Point. It's got four locations now, 
And I wish when I was growing up and had uh, challenges in calculus, I had somewhere like Mathnasium to go to because I had to, to struggle through calculus and geometry and you just provide such a great service. It's really needed in the community and it's just great for students to have that resource to be able to get them through those uh, tough math courses. So I want to congratulate you on Business of the Month. I know you're going to probably grow from four to maybe eight locations in the future. So. Um, our meetings are televised throughout Orange County, and you just never know when uh, you're going to get calls for people coming down and have to expand out further in, in a regional basis. So congratulations on being Business of the Month. We wish you many years of success. We know you're doing great, and I'm sure you're going to be planning on growing that business in the future. So congratulations. Would you like to say anything? Just want to uh, thank Mayor Bartlett and the City Council. We're very pleased to be in... Dana Point. Uh, we've been serving students from Dana Point since 2008 from our other locations and now we're here at, in the Gelson Shopping Center at Monarch Bay Plaza uh, and uh, having a lot of fun working with kids and uh, making math make sense to them. So thank you very much. Oh yes, this is my wife Dr. Geetika Mather. This is my daughter Ishana and this is uh, Lisa Anderson, our Director of Education. Kapil, we have a certificate of recognition for you today, Mathnasium Featured Business of the Month for October 2014. The City of Dana Point takes great pleasure in featuring Mathnasium located at 22 Monarch Bay Plaza in Dana Point and extends our congratulations on being named Dana Point Featured Business of the Month by Mary Lisa Bartlett on behalf of the Dana Point City Council and the City of Dana Point. Congratulations. Heather Johnson from our Chamber of Commerce would like to make a presentation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we did a ribbon cutting less than a year ago, and already you're getting business of the month, so congratulations. It's a pleasure to have you as a chamber member. It's a pleasure to have you uh, helping our young, uh, our young students here in town uh, with their math. Um, I would also like to present to you a marketing package so we can make sure that we get the word out about you guys, but you've been a fantastic addition to the chamber, so congratulations, and I love your pink. <laughs> oh, great. And now we have our employee of the month. Let me get my, grab my notes here. If we could have Ursula Luna Reynosa join me front and center. She's our director of community development. Our employee of the month is Ted Harris, a very deserving individual. Ursula, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Great, thank you. Um, and Mark, come on up as well. Ted Harris is one of my favorite kinds of employees. He's one of those people that you can give an assignment to and not worry about even checking in, you know it's going to be done and it's going to be done well. I've really enjoyed working with him on the short-term rental program. He's done a fantastic job of starting up that new program and doing a great job. Anytime you have any questions about the status of anything, he's very quick to provide that report. And I'd like Mark to say a few words as he works uh, very closely on a daily basis with, with Ted. Thank you. It's uh, great. I have to thank the mayor and city council for allowing me to work with such a great staff. Ted exemplifies five-star customer service. Uh, when he first came to work for us, uh, we assigned him to the Lantern Village uh, area. He immediately got out, got into the thick of things, got in uh, with the LVA, um, worked with them very closely. Uh, his uh, ties that he had from uh, police services uh, uh, worked out to, uh, to help us out through that. And then when the program for the short-term rental, as Ursula had mentioned, came together, he was the first one to step up and say, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to be part of that. And he's done a great job, and I really appreciate uh, that you recommend him and uh, having him as our employee of the month for, for this month. Thank you. If you could come up, please. Thank 
Congratulations. Ted, congratulations on being our Dane Point Employee of the Month for October 2014. You've got uh, quite a lot of accomplishments here. We'll just read uh, a couple of sections here. Um, let's see. Whereas Ted has worked on many complex code enforcement issues requiring a significant level of professional training and experience, he is an excellent problem solver, showing outstanding initiative. He has cultivated an extensive knowledge in substandard building codes and has been very effective in identifying and resolving immediate hazards in our community. Ted's work consistently reflects high standards and demonstrates a high versatility that benefits not only the Code Enforcement Division, but the entire city organization. Uh, your willingness to make a difference and guide the owners and property managers through the critical issues and code enforcement requirements ensures the project cases stay on track and meet minimum code requirements. You've done a great job for our city, making sure our city is a, a five-star um, city. And on behalf of the Dana Point City Council and the citizens of Dana Point, I want to congratulate you on being our Employee of the Month for October 2014. Congratulations. Uh, I'd just like to thank the city. I've worked here since uh, 1989 uh, with the Sheriff's Department. And I've seen the city go through a lot, and I can tell you that uh, working for the city is a privilege and, and an honor, and we have a lot of great people to work with, and uh, I, I just feel very honored to uh, be representing the city. Thank you. My, uh, my better half is uh, Vanessa, and that's my older boy, uh, Matt. We'll now move on to our consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and all will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless members of the city council, the public or staff request items be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Are there any items to be removed this evening by staff? Not this evening, Mayor Bartlett. Okay. Any items to be removed by the public? No, Madam Mayor. Okay, or the city council? Okay, do we have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. All opposed? All right. That passes. Okay. <clears throat> At this time, the city clerk will read the titles of the ordinances listed on the agenda. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have no title readings this evening. Thank okay. you. We'll now move on to public comments. There will be a three limit uh, time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for this public comments portion of the agenda. At the mayor's discretion, the balance of public comments will be heard after the new business portion of the agenda. All comments are to be directed to the city council and shall not consist of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain a professional courteous decorum during their comments, state law prohibits the city council from taking action on a specific item unless it appears on the posted agenda. Could we have the public comment requests? Thank you. I will call you up uh, one at a time. Please state your name and city of residence. The first speaker is Todd Glenn. Maybe if you could queue up um, behind the podium, that would be great. Our next speaker is uh, Josette Hatter, and after that we have Roger Bouton. <clears throat> Bouton, all right, sorry about that. Okay. Please begin. My name is Todd Glenn. I am a Dana Point resident and a member of VOM, the Voices of Monarch Beach. VOM is a collective group of Salt Creek Corridor residents who want to preserve the enjoyment of their beautiful community. 
it is on record as opposing the South Shores Church uh, project as proposed. Vaughn believes that this physically invasive monolithic conversion to a mega church, more than doubling its parent size, is a blatant non-compliant with existing regulatory ordinances and land use plans. Vaughn contends the enormous increase from the existing 42,500 to 89,300 square foot floor area constitutes an outrageous intensification of the site's infrastructure. Combined with a dual level parking structure, this master plan should be summarily rejected by the city plus the res uh, resource and trustee regulatory oversight agencies. Vaughn believes that this project, a commercial venture, should receive the same high level of review and inspection as any other corporate business. Its poorly planned egress and egress conditions will increase traffic congestion and aggravate existing circulation. Uh, circulation problems at the intersection of Sea Island Drive on both weekday and weekends for the Crown Valley Parkway commuters. The increased visitation trips jeopardize the compliance with the Orange County CMP agreement with the city. The scale, mass, and obtrusiveness of the preschool administration building on the southeastern quadrant are just a few of the site's major design flaws. The so-called necessary improvement will obliterate the vistas uh, for this designated scenic roadway in Dana Point. VOM also opposes the height variations requesting uh, for the community life center, as this would only further obstruct the scenic view. The project will further destabilize the bluff and surrounding neighborhood residents due to the increased runoff volumes and modification of historical drainage patterns. Historically, this zone has an alarming erosion problems and is known as a slide prone location, significant issues inadequately addressed by the draft EIR. It will further pollute the already degraded Salt Creek, a 303D federally listed impaired body. The proposed 40% increase of the post construction footprint will result in a 90% total build. About, uh, build acres becoming impervious surface. This is alarming and will significantly increase the contamination slothing surfaces. The project's water quality management plan and related stormwater attenuation mitigation are grossly insufficient. Thank you. Okay. All right, our next speaker, Josette Hatter. Thank you for the opportunity to address the council members and the community. I am Josette Hatter. My home at 23297 Pompeii Drive is below and adjacent to the southeastern quadrant of the proposed South Shore Church building site. I am here to express concerns about the applicant's proposed project and the alternate proposed project. My spouse and neighbors share my concerns. We are Voices of Monarch Beach. We ask, why is this a 10-year project? Is there a money problem? We are stunned that neither the city or the applicant acknowledge the uncertainty that the project brings to us. The sloping site is fragile. No one knows if it will slide during grading, earth removal, and pounding of dozens of huge pylons 90 feet into the landfill and rock. We request indemnification from applicant. Imagine the noise and the dirt. For the better part of 10 years, dust will float down onto our patios, decks, and streets. My chronic respiratory illness will be aggravated. My windows will be dirty and remain closed. I will suffer the loss of the outdoor beach life that I cherish and the bird song that is an important part of my life. I will be 73 years old if the project finishes on time. My spouse will be 81. Right now, the applicant is violating 2009 regulations for channeling stormwater runoff. Rainwater overflows its parking lot. The percolation mason is overgrown with plant materials. Water flows into already polluted Salt Creek waterway. V ditches are cracked, blocked, disjointed. Does the applicant plan to use this inadequate system for 10 years of construction? Their post water Post-construction water plans fail to provide treatment for bacteria-laden retained water and rely on V-ditches that appear to be inadequate. What about the management of nearby intersections? I request traffic studies for Monarch Bay Villas and Monarch Bay Plaza intersections with Crown Valley Parkway. I request speed monitoring. Vehicles traveling north in Crown Valley Parkway often exceed the 35 mile an hour speed limit. 
we lack the protection needed to enter a turn lane to make a U-turn at the nearest light. I wonder if there are people in this room who would willingly give up their quality of life to live behind closed doors and windows in a dirty and noisy part of town. That is not the Dana Point Beach City Resort Town that the city's master plan seeks to preserve. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Roger Buton. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. It's pronounced Buto. I'm Roger Buto. I'm the founder and executive director of a non-governmental organization called Clean Water Now. We've been around for 16 years. I am also uh, the last, I am a 42-year builder in South Orange County of commercial and residential. I also am a professional land use and regulatory uh, compliance advisor, and I have been doing, uh, performing in that role for the last 16 years. I'm here tonight just to reintroduce myself to the city, to the council, and there are some old familiar faces I notice here uh, from five years ago. Uh, we felt at that time that the church was too much on, on this particular site. Uh, it's overbuilt. It has so many flaws. I don't even have the time to go into it as a professional consultant. I'm going to probably end up writing two or three hundred pages of the deficiencies of this project. just want to say that it's disturbing that what we basically have is a mitigated negative declaration that someone just kind of whited out and put EIR over it. The project is basically the same. And believe me, uh, that's almost distressing to me. Although I'm a resident of Laguna, I am a coastal person and a beach guy, and it's disturbing to see that someone along our coast would really attempt to just keep doing the same thing. As Einstein said, you keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. That's the definition of insanity. Um, if the uh, city is unable to perform the intervention role, I'm sure that a grassroots organization like The Voices hopefully will bond with Save Dana Point and perhaps be able to uh, talk some sanity into someone at some level of government. If it has to be the Coastal Commission, if it has to be the San Diego Regional Water Quality Control Board, I profoundly believe that this will have significant issues with both. The hydrology and water quality report especially is extremely deficient, and that's the field that I excel in. My current clients, in case you wonder about my expertise, I was a, a, an advisor to the building of the Montage in Laguna Beach back in 2000 in my current portfolio, Santa Margarita Water District, Poseidon Resources doing the desalination in Huntington Beach, Homeowners Association called Can Do, which is an umbrella for all the HOAs in Laguna Canyon. So my portfolio is pretty intact. I do a pretty good job. I work for whoever pays me, one side or the other, and in this case, I am hopeful that we can find a resolution to this sooner rather than later. Uh, this is not really good money. I realize it's a church, and that's part of what is going to make this difficult for everyone to deliberate about, but it is a commercial corporate development on a commercial site, and uh, therefore I think it deserves the same oversight and review as you give to other commercial projects in Dana Point. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Nancy Jenkins, and then following Ms. Jenkins will be Heather Johnston and Ryan Lee. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I want to thank the City of Dana Point for having the wonderful events that they've had all summer, especially Kevin Evans and his group. And in on the same vein, this coming weekend is probably the major last event, the Oktoberfest. And on behalf of the Dana Point Fifth Marines, one of the many hats I wear is that I'm the one responsible to get all the volunteers to help, in this case, it's at the Oktoberfest that's serving beer. So I need some help because all of our volunteers, and we have a large cadre, and you've seen them at many events, they're tired. We've sent out emails, we've called our friends, we've done almost everything. So if anybody out there would like to have a fun weekend, we have two shifts each day, Saturday or Sunday, and it's, you get to meet a lot of fun people, and I know you're serving the Marines because just recently, our monies that we raise at these events are going to the seven groups of Marines that have been deployed over the last month to the Middle East in various locations. They are called the Ritty Force at this point. It is a new concept in the way the Marines are being based, and hopefully, 
the uh, colonel in a debriefing said that they would be doing everything feeding children that needed food, water, and even fighting if that was the case. So hopefully we can keep them supplied with a little bit of news from home and that's what we're trying to do by raising the money. So I can see all your heads nodding that you really want to volunteer at the Oktoberfest. So please would you email me? My email is n Jenkins, J-E-N-K-I-N-S, at cox.net. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Heather Johnston. Hello, my name is Heather Johnston. I'm the executive director of the Dana Point Chamber. I just wanted to invite you all today and everybody at home that we're having a city council candidate forum on this Thursday. It's from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, I look around the room and I see a lot of city council candidates, so I'm happy that you guys are here. It's in conjunction with the League of Women Voters of Capistrano Valley, Dana Point Civic Association, and the Dana Point Times. Again, it's Thursday, October 9th from 7 to 9 p.m. in this room. So I hope to see you there. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Ryan Lee. And then after Ryan, we have Sue Osborne, Michelle Robert, and Jim Gilbert. Hi, my name is Ryan Lee. Um, I'm here to uh, represent a group of homeowners from Nagel Shores um, that are in favor of a skate park. And um, we've been uh, uh, directed to to contact you guys in, in hopes of getting a skate park over by the library in Sea Terrace Park. Um, I also would like to say um, that uh, I do appreciate what you guys have been doing over there, the concerts and the events. It's, it's been a nice touch to Dana Point. And um, I'd also like to say I like this building a little bit better than the other one. It's nice and bright and not as crowded. Um, I do have a couple of questions, and um, I, I suppose they're, they're directed towards Doug, who I've been seeing around now that we've met. Um, I just would like to know what we need to do to get the uh, skate park discussion on the agenda, one. And um, I have become familiar with the city master plan and the appendix. Um, just want to make sure you guys have exhausted your resources at the water district. Um, the land adjacent here on the other side of the creek. I know they have plans. I know that was discussed originally in the master plan. Um, my opinion, uh, the master plan is from nearly 10 years ago. I'd like to see the city put out some effort to getting a vote or some public opinion, um, some sort of a public discussion so that we can bring this matter to uh, a yay or a nay because we've been doing a lot of effort to, you know, volunteer to research the locations that might be possible. We've listened to your um, agenda of what would be a priority, public transportation and parking, and the Sea Terrace Park next to the library seems like the best area for our kids, right by the library, the dog park. There's a little section of land right there by the bus stop that's really not getting used. So if you have a chance to respond to those two questions, um, if you guys are uh, fully exhausted over there with the water district about using that as a location and um, what we need to do to get this on the agenda or at least discussed publicly. Okay, All right, thank you. Our next speaker is Sue Osborne. Mayor Bartlett, if Thanks. I could just yeah. respond to Ryan. Ryan, call my office and we can, we can chat and oh. uh, a little bit more time than just now, two or three minutes. So give my office a call. Okay, and we'll so, find so some time if, to sit down. If we want to get a, a public response, is that not possible? Well, no, all the letters that they gave the council, I reached out as directed to the four agencies about possibly uh, joint venturing on available property. Mm -hmm. um, those went out uh, last week, council got them in their mail waiting to get responses from them. I know Mr. Kilbrew and I are going to be dialoguing with state parks uh, within the next couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, and Ryan. And we have, we have talked to the state, the county. I don't know who the fourth person that you're talking about. Um, I know San Juan Capistrano wants to build a skate park. We just, we want to know what it's going to take. We think Sea Terrace Park would be a great 
So I should direct the homeowners of Negel Shores to contact you personally? Uh, you can ask them to contact me or you can, they can come and talk during public communication just as you're doing this evening. Okay. As soon as I get the responses back from the four agencies that I sent, it was CUSD, the Water District, State Parks, and, and, and the City of San Juan Capistrano. Uh, I'll report back to the City Council uh, with those responses. Okay, great. Yeah, we're going to be here every meeting. I mean, you could see there's a group of guys. I, I never met these guys, and, and you're here. Thanks for showing up. You know, we're, we're going to be here until this gets either a yay or a nay. Okay. Obviously, we, we want the All right. yay. All right, thank you for being here. You've exceeded your time. Thank you. Okay. Our next speaker is Michelle Roberts. I'm Sue Osborne. Oh, excuse me, Sue Osborne. Yeah. I'm Sue Osborne. I live in Laguna Beach, but I have a couple of businesses in the town center in Dana Point. So I've been to all the meetings um, about the development of, of the town center. And there's one issue that I haven't heard raised at all. I, I was going to raise it last night, but I ran out of time. And that has to do with the issue of water and where is all of this water coming from with all this development. Between Majestic and Del Obispo, the condos, you have 277 new condos and 40,000 square feet of commercial. You have 250 rooms of this new hotel you're going to be speaking about tonight. There's also the San Clemente Outlet Mall. And this is just the beginning of the development of the town center. And I'm wondering, where is this water? Where do you get the water? We're on a three-year drought. There's no guarantee of the, any future rain. There really isn't with this climate change. And I haven't heard it, this addressed. And I think it's very concerning. And if it's like a desalinization plant, I would think those should be built, erected first to find out the production rate before buildings permits are issued out. It's like bankers, mortgage bankers giving out the loans a few years ago, and we know where that went. So I'm just, I'm just curious, where is all this water going to come from to, for all this building? Or has that been, hopefully that's been addressed. Okay, well, this is not an interactive session with the council, oh, well, it's just public right. comments. I just, you interact a little bit with Randy, so I thought maybe you could give me a yay or nay that it's been addressed or not. <laughs> Okay. I guess not. No. no. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Our next speaker is Michelle Roberts. Hi. Good evening. Um, my name is Michelle Roberts and I live here in Dana Point. Um, I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of building a skate park here in Dana Point. I'm speaking tonight because my 13 year old son Noah is an avid skateboarder. It is his passion. My husband and I are firm believers in supporting your children's passions as far as need be. We spend most weekends and weeknights revolving our life around two things, soccer for our daughter and skateboarding for our son. We need this skate park because when I am not shuttling a car full of boys to Laguna Niguel, San Clemente, or Lake Forest to skate their parks, these boys are left with no local safe resource. So being resourceful young men that they are, they skate banks, parking lots, the wash, supermarkets, parks, and even this local community center. I would love for my son to have a local place to go that was supported by our community and that we could all be proud of. Dana Point is an amazing community with caring residents who always stand up and support each other. I would love to see that from our city. It has been said many times that Dana Point is built on the surf skate culture. And I want to stand up today and say to you, embrace our skateboarders. They are passionate. They give their all to this sport. They practice tirelessly to hone their craft. And I want them to have a park of their own to do it in. We support so many other passions, baseball, basketball, soccer, golf, tennis, and even bocce ball. We build a park for our dogs. Why not our skaters? They are good kids who need a safe place to go, and I, for one, would like to keep my dollars in Dana Point instead of driving to and spending my time and money in other communities. Please hear what we have to say and embrace the idea of embracing our youth. They won't give up on their passion to build this park, and neither will I. Thank you. Thank you. Please, come on. 
We have some. Our next speaker is Jim Gilbert. And then after Jim, we have Monica Henderson, Christian Roth, and Matthew Frandell. Um, hi. Well, um, I hope, um, I see there's more people here than when I was here in July and I gave a copy of the Dana Point newspaper article with it on the front cover to people. Um, do you still have that, a copy to the people who were here in July? No? I don't know. I gave like 10 copies out to the people who were at the city council then and the person passed them around. Copies of the um, newspaper front cover, it was in March or April, uh, and I think they put it in their folders, the people who were here. You don't remember that? Okay. Or you do remember that? Okay, I, I don't know if you can make copies for all these people. I didn't bring any extras. I see there's more people here. Um, one thing I was just thinking of with the properties there. Um, last year, um, my dad had a couple investment properties and we sold one, and it turned out to be the Dana Point one, right off Selva, and um, instead of another one, and I was thinking one of the reasons to sell it is um, if I decided I would rather live at the other investment property if it went to that instead of the one Dana Point. And um, if, they th uh, if there was a skate park possibly right there, I might have told them to sell the one in Carlsbad or something like that um, instead of selling the investment property in Dana Point because I thought it was boring. I mean, Dana Point's kind of boring, it seems like. But um, basically, um, I hope if it's going to be made like um, they're going to make a big skate park. Have you ever um, gone by um, Lake Forest with Etnies Park, how big that is? Has anybody ever seen it? You might want to look at that and see like the, um, how big that is and not um, just make a small little um, park and get the size of a real skate park. Um, to, I mean, for example, down in San Diego County on the news, there was a $4.5 million given for two skate parks recently linda vista that got like more than three million in city heights that got more than a million i just happened to see that on the news um and basically at the skate parks i mean i've seen people do a lot more than skateboard i've seen them skateboard scooter bike and rollerblade i've even seen people unicycling at the sc park um another thing i don't know if you're planning on um, naming it after anybody but there's a couple of residents who i guess made a name at skateboarding like um there's um this one person that's his actual name he died last month he's from dana point he was a pro skateboarder and surfer his name's mike weed that's his real name <laughs> and another person who i consider a legend in skateboarding he was my favorite skateboarder when i started in 1991 i remember he graduated from dana hills high school in 92 his name's adam mcnatt so if you're thinking of you know ever naming it after anybody those are a couple people who locally have done stuff in skateboarding but um okay thanks i guess i right. speak that good. please please quiet our next speaker is monica henderson hi i'm monica henderson i'm from dana point um i'm not as prepared as everybody else i didn't expect this formal of a presentation but um i just want to reiterate i think your name was michelle what she said about the dana point skate park um i skateboard my son skateboards my husband skateboards all of our friends and family skateboard. We have a skateboard in our uh, park, and not a park, but a ramp in our backyard. We've been having problems with the police coming, const well, not constantly, but pretty often now during the day, just when my child's out there just having fun with his friends. And we just don't really have anywhere in this area for that kind of activity. We have basketball, softball, we have every other event everywhere you can think of in this area, but not a skate park. So. I'm hoping that it can be um, in the agenda for consideration, and that's about all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Christian Roth. Hello. My name is Christian Roth, and I'm a sophomore at Dana Hills. I can speak for all of my friends um, that we have all been praying for a skate park here. We're tired of getting hurt in the streets, and I want a place where I can go and be safe and skate in a comfortable environment where I won't where the police won't come up to me, where I won't have to be afraid of getting hit by cars or damaging property. We all wish to just effectively pursue our passions in a safe way and think of all the damage that skateboarding causes on public property. It could all be slowed to maybe even a stop with a skate park. You can't keep kids from skateboarding because it's their passion. We'll never stop, we're always gonna be skateboarding here. And you'll be doing the whole community a big favor by building a skate park. 
You can even charge people to go to the skate park if you want to. We just want a place where we can practice our sport safely. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The next speaker is Matthew Frandell. Hello, my name is Matthew Frandell. I'm a freshman at Dana Hills High School and I'm 13 years old and every day I skateboard. I don't have a speech, so yeah. <laughs> Um, I think a good idea would be a skate park. All my friends and I skate park, or skate, and we all want a skate park. It'd be a good idea because it could bring tourists, it could bring kids, everyone, it could bring money to the city. I think it's a good idea. It's more safer than skating the streets. Every day I skate with my friends in the streets and it's dangerous because cars go by super fast. If we're at a skate park, it'd be way more safer and we're not damaging public property. Thank you. Okay, our next three speakers are Chandler Sieverts, Brandon Peterson, and Ryan Bohm. Um, good evening, my name is Chandler Sieverts, and I'm 15, and I'm a sophomore at Dana Hills. I'm here to speak on part of the skate park for Dana Point. It's really necessary because we're just tired of skating in the same spots every day. And today, I literally almost got hit by three cars. <laughs> um, and another reason why I feel the need for a skate park is um, we need somewhere that we can ride there with our skateboards instead of having our parents pay gas mileage to get to Lake Forest and St. Clemente. And um, sometimes when our parents can't drive us, we take the bus and that's just like, money that I have to spend and right now I don't have a lot of money and I just like skate park right to be after school to go over on the weekend it's just like to have right here with the family organization same people there every day having friends making friends and then kids like little guys like right here they can be there in the future when it's finished and he can be up here he doesn't have to worry about fighting for one he can just go skate one and um just um do it for the kids because kids need need somewhere safe to be instead of football because some kids don't like to do that. Some kids just like to do their own thing independently. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Brandon Peterson. Hi, my name is Brandon Peterson and I'm a sophomore at Dana Hills High School and I think that building a skate park here in Dana Point would benefit our community greatly. And adults always say that skating around town and in the streets is dangerous and it destroys the community by chipping curbs and benches or messing up rails and waxing ledges. I think that putting a skate park here in our town would allow all the people here in our community that skates a safe place for them to go and skate without the fear of getting in trouble. It also allows kids to go out and make new friends and go further in their passion of skating. Thank you. Here, our last speaker is Ryan Bohm. Hello, my name is Ryan. I've been here since uh, 1980. My parents live on Sea Island. Uh, Growing up here, surfing and skating, and we definitely need a skate park here. It's a good place for kids to go and do what they need to do, get their energy out, and just like to have you take into consideration. Thank you. Okay, and that concludes our public comments. We'll now move on to public hearings, item number nine. Could we have a staff report on this item, please? Of course, Mayor Barton. Item number nine was noticed this evening for a hearing on the Harbor LCPA. And so what we'd like to do is we received communication from the Harbor asking for a continuance to a date certain of November 18th for this hearing. Okay, do we have council members who'd like to comment? I'd, I'd be prepared to move, uh, move a request for that continuance, Madam Mayor. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. And that item is continued to November 18th. We now move on to item number 10. Could we have a staff report on this item, please? Of course, Mayor Bartlett. Um, item number 10 is the uh, public hearing associated or the continuation of the public hearing associated with the Beverly Hills Hospitality Group project known as the Dolini Hotel. Late yesterday afternoon, the city received a communication addressed to Mayor Bartlett. It says, on behalf of the Beverly Hills Hospitality Group, I would like to respect, respectfully withdraw our project as it currently has been presented to the City Council. 
After listening to the City Council's comments at the last meeting, the applicant feels that it is in everyone's best interest to take the comments of the City Council Planning Commission as well as the community and re redesign our project to pursue a project design that better comports with the community comments and zoning code. After the applicant has had a chance to work with their architect, we will resubmit our application for review by the Planning Commission. It is our understanding that because our project will be a less intense use as the current project outlined in our existing environmental impact report, we believe that we can prepare an addendum to that report as opposed to having to redo the entire CEQA process. While we believe the community comments favor a hotel at the site, the applicant believes that he can return with a hotel design that better conforms to the city's zoning code and reflects the community's comments and desires. Sincerely, Robert Thiel for Michael Draz, Beverly Hills Hospitality Group. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions or comments from council members? Just council member Schoffel? One short question, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, Mr. Shotkevis or Mr. Munoz, uh, just, just two things. First of all, it, does this tender of a letter operate as a um, uh, withdrawal of the appeal as a matter of law? It appears to me that that's what they're uh, attempting to do. It, it appeared to me the same way. I just wanted to make sure that it appeared to all of us that that was the, uh, the case. The second thing is, um, if, if the city were to accept this, this letter, uh, it's not making a sequent determination by accepting this letter. Um, Mr. Thiel's language was merely an expression of uh, his belief, his intent, his client's intent, that uh, perhaps the CEQA uh, portion of a new project application could be handled in that fashion. And, and it may well be able to be handled that way, but we're not making a determination uh, here tonight. No, no we're not making case. any CEQA determination. And in fact, I don't think just by looking at the language of the letter in context, I don't think they were trying to be, you know, using the term, uh, you know, addendum to the sequel, to the EIR has, is a little bit of a term of art. I don't really think that's what they intended. Um, we could probably continue to use the existing CEQA document. Not probably, we would certainly be able to use right. the existing CEQA documents, but they would have to be modified, tweaked somehow or another to reflect whatever we might see in the future. You'd go through whatever CEQA required in connection with yeah. a new application for a new project. Right not necessarily uh, redoing the entire process. Uh, you could rely on previous documentation to the extent it was uh, appropriate and relevant and everything else, but uh, the city would, would go through that as it would the rest of the application. Yeah, yeah, I mean, by example, and this isn't the facts that we have in front of us, but if Mr. Draz and his um, group just completely went away and had no interest in the project whatsoever, and the Hyatt came to us tomorrow with an application for a hotel at this site. They could rely on the yes. existing sequel work that's been done because right. it's still pertinent to a hotel at this site. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Mayor, I, I don't want to cut off discussion, but I'd be uh, prepared to make a motion to accept uh, uh, the applicants. Okay. Do we have any letter. other comments from council members? Okay, we have a uh, motion. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem? One, um, do we have any public discussion? before we're making motions, et cetera. No public comments, thank you. Well, in light of that, not to usurp Councilman Schofield, I'd like to make a, make a motion and, um, you know, in light of the applicant's letter, I make the following motion. If and when a revised project is submitted to the city, staff treat it as a continuation of the current project, analyze it and submit it to the Planning Commission in the normal course of business. And two, this action is intended to reflect the council's action on the appeal is to direct that the matter be returned to the staff for further consideration and if and when a revised project is submitted by the applicant. Okay, is that a substitute motion? That's a sub, well, yes. that's a substitute motion. One question of the maker of the substitute motion. It sounds yes. okay to me. Um, what happens to the appeal as a matter of law? Uh, I am meaning this, that this means the Planning Commission's denial is in, assessment, in essence wiped out or wiped clean from the project's record, but the applicant has to submit a revised proposal yeah. to the staff 
which will go to the Planning Commission and get a full public hearing. And based on the applicant's letter, it is our expectation that a project will conform, which conforms much more to our existing standards than anything we have seen submitted in the past will be considered. Okay, so, so your substitute motion includes a withdrawal of the appeal, is that correct? Well, mm -hmm. it would basically mean that the, the denial, Planning Commission's denial is wiped clean, um, which will give one, the applicant, the ability to um, start the process over again, um, not have this, quote, denial hanging over his head for uh, with his investors, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I think it's the fair thing to do for the city council. Uh, well, if, if, the, if the project is, um, according to your motion, Mr. Weinberg going to go, must go before the planning commission again, and then presumably the planning commission will have the opportunity to approve or deny it at that time, correct? Yes. Okay, so I would, I would second uh, uh, Mr. Weinberg's motion, substitute okay. motion. Very good. On the substitute motion, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. That item passes. We have no unfinished business. We have no new business. We'll now move on to staff reports. City Manager Chuck Cavies. Just a brief one. I want to thank staff and police services for the uh, work they've done for the city events since uh, basically the event season kicked off with Festival of Wales. We have one more event, and I'm told we can then put C Terrace to bed for about six months. And uh, uh, I, I just want to thank staff. This weekend we had two events that I had some concerns about, but they appear to have been managed very well. Um, so again, kudos to staff and Russ. Thank you very much for your team of deputies. Uh, they, uh, they represented the city, and I, I, as far as I can tell, we had no events on either day. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Yeah, so that's all I have to say from Mayor Bartlett. Okay, we'll now move on to City Attorney Munoz. Uh, two items, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, as you may have seen in the papers, uh, the governor did sign the uh, recent legislation that uh, was prepared by the state uh, legislature dealing with uh, plastic bags. Um, and I thought it'd be worthwhile to report to the council that there's an exception in the state legislation which in essence says if there's an existing local uh, regulation on uh, plastic bags that uh, that remains in, intact. So uh, in Dana Point, our existing legislation will uh, apply as opposed to the state legislation. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Patem. Uh, if I remember the state ordinance or law or code or whatever it's called, uh, mandates a 10%, 10 cent charge for what, recyclable plastic bags and or paper bags. Since our ordinance does not have that, that means that the city still operates under no mandatory charges. Is that, that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Our office is preparing a summary along with um, public works staff that we'll be providing uh, to the council and be available for the public uh, that sort of outlines the differences between the, the two laws and, and how they interact. So you'll have a little more detail on that in the future. Uh, secondarily, a uh, recent uh, legislation uh, that was adopted um, undoes what prior legislation had done uh, in connection with massage parlors. Um, a few years ago, the, the massage industry apparently, uh, through their lobbying efforts, had some legislation passed that took away local control uh, over zoning issues relating to uh, massage establishments. Um, the governor just signed uh, legislation undoing that and basically giving back local control for zoning and that sort of thing, business regulations uh, to, to, to those establishments, so, uh, or in connection with those establishments, I should say. So we'll be looking at that issue as well and uh, bringing back something for the council to consider uh, in connection with that in the future. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. We'll now move on to council comments. We'll start with council member Bro. Thanks, Mayor Bartlett. Uh, just a few meetings to report. On the 25th of September, I attended a reception to greet the new Capistrano Unified School District Superintendent at Brio. October 1st, I attended with my wife the Saddleback College State of the College. October 3rd, I attended the Orange County Auto Show, although they would not let me drive any of the new vehicles. Uh, I also went to the Dana Point Barbecue Welcoming Dinner that night, and this morning I spoke at the Nigel Shores Men's Club, <coughs> and that concludes my report. Okay, we'll now move on to Councilmember Olvera. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. On September the 20th, uh, I attended the Relay for Life at Lantern Bay Park on October the 1st. Uh, it was the uh, Lantern District meeting uh, for Town Center. On October the 2nd, I attended the Orange County Library Board meeting. October the 3rd, uh, I was at the opening for the Dana Point Championship Barbecue, and then on October the 4th, I was there to present the awards. Okay, Council Member Schofel. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have a number of meetings that I'll, uh, I again, promise to turn into Kathy Ward at uh, some time. Um, but I would like to mention uh, the event that was most special to me was the Relay of Life that was held at the end of uh, September. Um, I was there for two days and uh, met a lot of great people, a lot of people who have uh, uh, suffered terrifically in their lives and, and still were some of the happiest people I've met this uh, this year and it was just a real uh, privilege to be able to host that in our city and I encourage people to get out and support that event every single year. I know the mayor was there, Mr. Olvera was there and uh, uh, we'd like to see a lot more people out there. And uh, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I will second what Scott Schofel said in the sense that I promised to turn in my meetings to um, the city clerk. Um, if not, she'll bug me to death. Uh, you know, I hope everybody had a great summer, and we have a great fall coming up with Oktoberfest. Um, come out and enjoy a, a couple of beers in our beautiful Sea Terrace Park, and hopefully we'll have decent non-hot weather. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And, and just touching on the uh, single-use plastic bag ordinance that was recently passed at the state, you know, when, when you think about it, you've got 484 cities in California, and there were a handful of cities that uh, we all knew this was coming because several years ago, about four years ago, it was almost passed at the state level, and it missed passing by about 10 votes. So it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. And a number of cities, including Dana Point, with the majority of our council and um, having the leadership and foresight to put something into effect that was literally a win-win for everyone. Um, the ordinance that we crafted works for our small businesses, it works for the city, our tourists, and certainly our hotels. We're now considered an eco-friendly city. We've brought in incrementally millions of dollars of business because we are an, in, we are an eco-friendly city. Um, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, every hotel room in Dana Point for a business conference was full, and the overflow had to go to Laguna Beach. So the great thing about this ordinance, it's been an economic development tool for our businesses and certainly for our hotels. Um, we do not have a 10 cent charge on paper bags for people coming to Dana Point. Uh, the state cap is $2 million for small businesses. We have an increase on that to $4 million. So we're truly protecting our mom and pop businesses right here in Dana Point. And uh, we have an exemption for the restaurants, and I don't believe that's the case at the state level. So when you talk about the ordinance that we crafted and had the foresight to put into effect, it's been great for our businesses, it protects our taxpayers, and it protects the residents and our tourists coming to our city, and it's something that um, is, uh, is a great thing to have in place. With regard to uh, some of the items that I've uh, addressed and attended, I've attended several TCA meetings over the past couple of weeks, and I also attended the welcome reception for the incoming CUSD superintendent, uh, Kirsten Vital. I think she's going to be just a great welcome addition to the school district. She's got so much um, vitality and energy. She's so experienced, and I'm, I look forward to, uh, to working with her. October 14th is the grand reopening of our Dana Point Library. We're very excited about this, so please come down. It'll be starting at 1015 at the Dana Point Library. And then October 18th um, at the Dana, For Dana Wharf Sport Fishing Dock, we have our Fish for Life event where we take um, special needs children out on the boat for a day of fishing. And if you've never um, seen the excitement of these children, I I've been down there um, several times now to welcome all of the guests on the red carpet coming onto the boat. And it's really quite an experience and they are so excited to go out there and catch fish. So if you haven't experienced that, um, come on down. It starts about 8.30 in the morning on the 18th at the Dana Wharf uh, Sport Fishing Dock. We also have our Dana Point fall edition of the community news available at City Hall and at the community center. So if you don't have one already, um, come down and pick one up. That concludes my comments and we'll be adjourned now until our next regularly scheduled meeting on October the 21st. Thank you. Have a great evening.